HomeKit in 2020, in my view, received some great attention from Apple along with some nice update. At WWDC, we received updates to HomeKit Secure Video in the form of facial recognition for cameras and also HomeKit doorbell support with facial recognition announcement via the Apple TV and also chimes on the HomePod. We also received a update in the form of HomeKit adaptive lighting, which adapts the light throughout the day. Then later on in the year, the Apple event in October, we got the HomePod mini with thread support, which is certainly going to be the centerpiece of HomeKit going into 2021. We also received an update in the form of intercom, which allows you to communicate with family members using a HomePod or iOS device. So these were some great improvements and really showed from both of these events that Apple was starting to take HomeKit a lot more seriously. So as we move into 2021, we've got a number of things that could possibly happen this year. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the hardware and software that I think we'll see come in 2021 and some of my predictions of where HomeKit is going. Hi, welcome back. My name is John and this is HomeKit Authority, which is dedicated to everything HomeKit. So if you're into HomeKit, new into HomeKit, or thinking about getting into a smart home platform, then check out the rest of the videos on this channel as they might help you out. And if you want to be part of the HomeKit community, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. Also follow us on social media at follow HomeKit. The links are in the description below where you'll be kept up to date with everything to do with HomeKit. And also, if you have your own suggestions, things you'd like to see within HomeKit, leave it in the comment section below and let's debate it as a community. You never know. Apple may see these comments and these feature suggestions and implement them in future versions. So one of the things I mentioned at the start of the video was Thread, and I've mentioned it in a number of videos. So I did a video on how Thread works and why it's important for HomeKit. I've also done a review of the Nanoleaf Essential light bulb, which uses Thread in order to connect to the HomePod mini and into HomeKit. And I think Thread will play an important part in HomeKit, both in 2021 and beyond. Now, we've already seen manufacturers from Nanoleaf announcing that they're going to support this protocol in all their future HomeKit products. And also, Eve as well are already rolling out support to existing products that support it, but also have made a commitment that any future products will, should include it. And now, there's been reports around Philips U, they're gonna support Thread. However, it doesn't look like their light bulbs are going to support it. It's only gonna be their bridge products, the, the U bridge, which I think is a bit useless to be honest. Other than adding another Thread device to make it more stable, I don't think it's really gonna add any value to the Philips U range. It'd be great to see them including Thread support in their light bulbs, certainly their Bluetooth range, this would make perfect sense to include them in HomeKit. However, going forward, I do think Thread is going to play an important part for HomeKit, especially for manufacturers that design and develop and uh, ship products like motion sensors, door lock, and things like that that run on batteries. This would be great because it's so low powered. It'd be great to see those devices working and having a faster response. It's also going to be great to see more lighting products such as Miros who produce lights, including Thread support because Wi-Fi sometimes is not that great when you have a lot of Wi-Fi products on your network and Bluetooth as we've seen in some of the uh, videos is not as responsive. So I think manufacturers are really going to focus this year on bringing Thread support to their products and it's going to be great to see this wireless protocol making a real impact to HomeKit and actually bringing more stability to the platform. Now a focus area in 2020 was HomeKit secure video cameras. I think that will continue into 2021. One of the things that's been asked for since HomeKit Secure Video come out is the number of cameras to be increased. Now with normal HomeKit cameras, you can add as many as your network will support. But to enable them for HomeKit Secure Video, you first of all need a HomeKit Secure Video enabled camera and the relevant iCloud plan. Now the top iCloud plan allows you to add five devices. And I know in my case, when I'm testing new cameras, I have to take off cameras off HomeKit Secure Video in order to do that because I've already hit my limit. Now, I know I'm not unique in this. Lots of people in the community are asking for more cameras to be included. Now, I don't think it's going to go up to 10 or, or an unlimited amount simply because of the amount of storage that it will take. And also, I think the current hardware would be not able to cope with it unless they added off different cameras to different HomeKit hubs within your home. But I think this year we should see an increase 
to HomeKit Secure Video Camera Support, maybe to about seven. Now, sticking with HomeKit Secure Video, one of the things that came in 2020 was facial recognition. And if you're using a HomeKit doorbell and someone comes to your door and you're watching content in your Apple TV, it pops up on the screen with that person and a live view. Now, what would be really good is if those pop-ups also worked for normal HomeKit Secure Video Cameras. So for instance, if you're watching your Apple TV and you're watching a show or you're watching any content on there, if someone comes onto your drive and it's an unknown face, it'd be great to see it popping up onto your Apple TV to let you know that someone is on your drive or someone is walking around your house so you can go and investigate and find out what's going on. This would be one thing that I think Apple could really do from a security point of view to help improve HomeKit Secure Video or even the HomePod. If an unknown face is detected or someone is walking around, then your HomePod will announce. This would be great to see that. Next up is improving the Ohm app and also supported devices. One of the complaints is the number of icons that are in there. They're pretty limited. However, I must admit that I get the use out of the icons in there. There's a couple of times where it'd be great if I could swap an icon out, for instance, in my studio. One of my cameras is attached to a smart plug. It'd be great to put a camera icon there in order to identify it more quickly. However, I think Apple should bring more icons, particularly for lighting products. As lighting products expand and more lighting options are available, sometimes it's pretty limited. So it'd be great to see icons being made available or more icons, certainly. It'd also be great to see manufacturers being able to input their own icons within the OMAP when a device is added. Again, this would be easier for devices that are unique. It'd also be great, but I think this is a bit of a stretch for us users to be able to upload our own third party icons and be able to create them ourselves. That'd be a great improvement, but I don't think Apple are gonna go down that route personally, but it'd be great to see. It'd also be great to see more device types being added. For instance, I've got the need to robot Uvers, both upstairs and downstairs. And whilst I can attach them to HomeKit with HomeBridge, it'd be great to see native support, particularly because I do prefer native HomeKit support over third-party solutions. And it'd be great to see that, but it'd also be great to see them expand into the categories such as dishwashers, washing machines, ovens, and those types of devices. After all, this is a smart home platform and it's currently on lights, locks, motion sensors, and all of those things, but it's great to see them expand into appliances to be able to really build a smart home that people want to build, people want to use, and it'd be great to see that. So hopefully Apple are gonna to start to expand into that in 2021 and beyond. Now next up is Intercom. Now this was announced back in October of 2020 along with the HomePod Mini, and it's a feature that allows you to send a message either via iOS device or your HomePod to people in your home or specific devices, in particular HomePods. Now, right now you only can reply using a pair of AirPod, or if your child's in the bedroom, you send a message to the house, that person can reply and let you know they've got your message. Be great to see the ability to be able to reply to a intercom. Now I'm not saying having backwards and forward conversations. I'm talking about if you send a message to your entire house or a specific home pod where your child is sat and they can simply reply to say, yes, I'm coming in two minutes. That'd be nice to see. It'd also be great to see intercom being deployed to the Mac. Currently it's not available on the Mac. And as more and more people are working from home, they're using Apple Mac devices such as iMac or the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air. And it'd be great to have intercom on the Mac to people to be able to send those intercom, especially if someone's working in an office, they can send an intercom to the entire house saying, I'm finishing work in five minutes. Is everyone ready to leave? That'd be great to see intercom, see them improvements. The next area is HomeKit TVs. Now they were announced about 18 months ago, maybe two years. And we've seen a number of manufacturers from LG and Sony support HomeKit within TVs. Currently it supports HomeKit. So it appears in the Ohm app and also AirPlay 2. So you can stream content from your devices to your TV and it just plays on there. Now with HomeKit, it's pretty much limited. I've got a HomeKit TV and I do use it within my home. And I also use it in my cinema room to be able to turn it on when I activate my movie scene. However, it's pretty much limited to that, turning on and off and also assigning which input you want the TV to be turned on to. And this for me, I could do that with a remote anyway. So for me, I think Apple could take this one step further. For instance, in my movie scene, when I'm using my Apple TV, I can tell my Apple TV to turn on, but also open the app for a 
streaming service that I want to use. And I might have one for Disney or my one for Netflix, but I have to do that through a shortcut. But it'd be great to see Apple expand up the API to allow manufacturers to be able to not only turn the TV on and select an input, be, but be able to open a streaming app that sits within that TV. This is really enhance the user experience. I think right now it's great. You can turn your TV on using Siri or something like that, but I think it really needs some more attention. I think we should see further support for HomeKit TVs in 2021, or certainly this is one of my wishes that I would like to see. Now, next up is U1. Now U1 or ultra wide band, as it's also known, features in a number of devices you may not already know. It features in the Apple Watch Series 6. It also features in the iPhone 11 and iPhone 12. It also features in the HomePod Mini, and it's possibly gonna feature in future devices such as the new Apple TV and also AirTags. Now, currently ultra wide band is used with the HomePod Mini and the iPhone to be able to hand off music. And it does give a little bit of better experience as you move closer, it starts to vibrate and you can hand over that music, but, I think Apple could really use ultra wide band for a number of different applications and particularly HomeKit. Right now within HomeKit, if you leave your home and go out of your perimeter, it uses your GPS data to determine you've left your home and to activate an automation if you've got one in place. Similarly, if you're coming back home, it can use that GPS data and your location data to be able to determine you're coming back home and be able to run automations. What it can't do is it can't track you inside your home. And I don't mean track you to send that data off to somebody. I mean, track you to be able to be useful, to be able to determine where in your home you are to activate devices. And I personally think with the ultra wideband U1 chip, you'll be able to use that. So if you're walking around your home and you've got an Apple Watch Series 6 on and you say walk into your bedroom, it could automatically detect you've walked into your bedroom and it knows you're in there at nighttime. It could turn on your lights to a certain preset. If it could use presence detection wherever you're in your room to be able to interact with HomeKit devices and be able to use them using ultra wideband. So I personally think you having HomePod minis and possible future devices with the U1 chip built in in certain rooms will be able to enhance HomeKit to be able to give you a better user experience when you're walking around your home and to make your home more smart rather than simply relying on sensors that are in your home right now, which have been around since the early 90s that have been used to activate things using U1, using technologies that use presence and also location tracking to be able to determine, I think is the future of HomeKit. So it's gonna be great to see how Apple do this. They've certainly start to lay the foundations for using U1 in their future products. Where that's gonna go, I don't think we know yet, but they've certainly start to implement the U1 chip into a number of devices and they're not really taking advantage at all of it. So it's certainly something they're gonna possibly go down in the future. And I think everything's inting towards it being part of HomeKit and the smart home. And finally, expanding on HomeKit doorbell support. Now at WWDC last year, we received some support for HomeKit doorbells and being able to have doorbell chimes via the HomePod. I think it'd be great to see Apple expand this. For instance, with the Apple TV, you get a notification if you're watching content, but right now you can't interact with that content. You can simply see who's at your door, which you still have to pick up your iOS device or go to the door if you want to be able to speak to that person. What'd be great to see is if someone rang your doorbell and it popped on your Apple TV, that you could also talk to that person. This would be useful if, for instance, in my case, the cinema room is in a room at the back of the house and I was watching content and it was just a delivery driver delivering something, I could say, chuck it in the porch. Now we do know at the moment, the current Apple TV hardware is not capable of voice interaction other than using Siri to be able to talk in that way through a doorbell. But Apple may be bringing out a new Apple TV where they may improve the voice hardware to be able to do that. But where I think really Apple will go this year and it's certainly capable of doing this is using a HomePod to speak to someone through a doorbell. So for instance, a use case, you're in the shower and you hear your doorbell go via your HomePod, you pop out of the shower, your phone's not nearby, but your HomePods let you know. You can then ask 
the HomePod to open up a communication with your doorbell and ask the person who they are. And again, the same use case, it's a delivery driver and they brought your parcel. You don't wanna go downstairs because you're in the shower. You could simply speak to them through the HomePod via the doorbell and ask them to leave the parcel in your safe place. Similarly, again, if you're in your home, and someone comes and it's a known face and it lets you know that that person is at your door, you could tell your HomePod to tell the person to come in and also unlock the door so they could come in as well. I think this is where Apple could really go with doorbell support to be able to interact through the HomePod and speak to people through the doorbell. Now, this will be useful because not a lot of people might not have their iOS device in these cases with them. I certainly walk around my house and don't necessarily carry my phone. I do have my Apple Watch on me all the time. However, it'd be a lot easier because the amount of HomePods I've got throughout my home now to be able to interact with someone at a doorbell. So guys, that's the end of the video. And as I said at the start, if you've got your own suggestions or things you would like to see, leave it in the comment section below and let's debate it as a community. Also, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also share it as that's greatly appreciated and it really helps me out in order to get the content out to more people. Also, if you're new around here, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos as there's more HomeKit stuff. And if you want to be part of this community, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. Also check out our website, homekitauthority.com and our social channels at Follow HomeKit. All the links to everything is in the description below. And finally, thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.